Is FSR, or now RSR, free performance? No. You gotta roll the credits. All right, so what is FSR, what is RSR, why am I throwing all these acronyms at you? Well, FSR came out a little while ago, and it's kind of AMD's competition or alternative to NVIDIA's DLSS. DLSS is an upscaling tool that uses NVIDIA's fancy AI um, rate RTX cores, I think it is, or Tensor cores. It uses NVIDIA's fancy hardware and some AI uh, magic to upscale an image. So you're running a game at say 720p, but it upscales it to 1080, or 1080 to 1440, or 1440 to 4K, you get the idea. So you're running the game at a lower resolution, so it runs better, but you're upscaling it to look better on your 4K monitor or 1080p monitor. Because if you've ever run a game that's not at native resolution, you know it doesn't look as good as it really should. FSR, like I said, is the same thing, just no AI. So it's not always as good, sometimes it's worse, but it works on almost any card that's modern. It'll work on AMD cards and Nvidia cards, so that's pretty cool. RSR is now the Radeon Super Resolution tool, which is built into the new AMD, what do they call it now? AMD Software Adrenaline Edition driver. So this is FSR like we've had before, but now it's built into the system driver and it's enabled for most games. Now there's some caveats, there's some, you know, incompatibilities here and there, but for a first launch, it's pretty decent. Now, first things first, you need to update your AMD driver to version 22.3.1 or newer. This is what's out at time of video or time of filming. You need to make sure you have a new AMD graphics card. It needs to be uh, 5000 or 6000 series. So, unfortunately for you guys with Vega or uh, Vega anything, unfortunately for you guys with Radeon 7s, I know you're out there and I'm sorry, but it doesn't run on a Radeon 7 either. AMD, come on. <laughs> why is that not working on Radeon 7? And why is this not working on your mobile iGPUs? If anything needs it, it's my laptop. You go to your desktop, you right click, you open your AMD Adrenaline Software Edition. You'll open to the home page, and you'll go ahead and make sure your drivers are up to date. At least 22.3.1, because at time of filming, that is the first driver version with this support. Now, I'm sure there's going to be a few more iteratives, like 22.3.2, .3, that kind of fix some of the weird AMD making driver software shenanigans. Uh, it'll, it'll hopefully fix those. Although, so far, it's looked pretty good for me. So to enable it, you pull up your Radeon software, you go to gaming, you go to either global graphics, um, or you manually open a title. For the most part, I'm just going to leave it on for global, because it's easy enough to turn on or off in-game as you play. So from here, you just turn on Radeon Super Resolution, and that's more or less it. Sounds kind of easy, and if it works, it is easy. So I'm going to show you how to turn it on once you're in a game by opening Red Dead Redemption 2, which is a game that I still need to play. It's pretty straightforward. You're going to go pull up a game of your choice, you're going to go to your graphic settings, and you're going to go ahead and set your in-game resolution to be lower than your native resolution. So this monitor is a 1080p display, and then you need to make sure your screen type is set to full screen. This does not work as far as I'm aware if you're running a windowed or borderless windowed uh, game. It has to be uh, exclusive full screen. The other thing to be aware of is that in some titles you can have a render resolution and a display resolution. Uh, I turned them both to 720p, although as far as I'm aware, you can run the render resolution down and it should pick up on that. It upscales everything, so that's fine. If you have the UI, it, it's not that big of a deal. So there we go. I apply my changes. It goes to full screen like it's supposed to. Okay, so now I'm in game and you may be wondering, how do I tell if it's working? Well, for one thing, you can go tab back, turn it off, come back and see how fuzzy the game looks, which is annoying. Or if you haven't turned it off already, you can use your little AMD uh, in-game pop-up thing, which is accessed by hitting Alt-Z. And you know, it shows you frame rate, game, how long you've been playing, all that nonsense. Half of it's wrong because the average frame rate will factor in menu loading time still. I don't know why. But you do that, you click on the little hamburger menu. 
you go to the cog. I'm sure there's an easier way, but I cannot navigate this well. This is super not intuitive. <laughs> you go to your gaming. It's just like when we turned it on originally. You go to gaming and you can turn it on or off here. So I'm just gonna tab through that briefly. Escape out. Oh, Alt Z out. So now when I Alt Z, it should pop up here and they'll tell you if it's enabled or not. And you can quickly turn it on or off. You can kind of see, well, it's hard to tell with the snow, but he definitely gets a little sharper uh, when you turn it on. So that's how you can tell if it's working or not. And again, your game needs to be running in exclusive full screen mode. It needs to be on a Radeon 5000 or 6000 GPU. And that's all you do. You just run it at less than native res and it upscales. Now the whole point of this video is showing that the performance is not free. There's plenty of channels that cover the quality of FSR versus not. It's one of those things that's hard to show through a still image because you kind of need that motion to show the artifacting, the blurring, and the shimmering in the background. But it's also hard to show on a YouTube video because, well, you have to deal with YouTube's compression and everything like that. So it's not always the easiest thing to show. I'll leave that to other bigger channels to kind of figure out. I've been dealing with a lot of comments and a general misconception of, is FSR free performance? People just seem to think that you enable it and your game runs faster and it's great. So the problem is that while you're running the game at a lower resolution, which is good for performance, it's still not free. And I ran some testing and I checked out a few titles to one, see how the software works, two, if it works, and three, to show if there is a performance hit between running a game at say, 720p native, or taking a 720p game and upscaling it to 1080p. I'm working with 1080p here because honestly, I feel like a lot of this will be for lower or more mid-range hardware, especially with the graphics card shortage, which is getting better, I think. I, hope. Uh, I wanted to test with some more modest hardware instead of busting out a 6900 XT and a 5950X or whatever nonsense hardware. So the system I have right now is relatively modest. It's not perfect. It's not what everybody will be running. It's running Ryzen 3100 four core, eight thread. Now it's not a true four core system. Like you're, well, it's true four cores, but it's two different modules of two cores each interconnected with infinity fabric. So you might be wondering how big of a hit that is. It's a little bit of a hit, but it's not colossal. And we did some testing a while ago with this versus a 4790K, and it was pretty close. I think this thing actually beat out the 4790K somewhat. Close enough, and I think this represents a more modest CPU that maybe the average person uses, and the person that will feel the biggest increase is going to be that person. It also has a 5500 XT in it, which more mid-range card, and they were easy to get a hold of before the crisis. I would have recommended buying one of those back then because honestly, I love that card. It runs 1080p, most titles fairly well. Something to be aware of with FSR, and like I said, I've already done some game testing and I'll have Gab throw up the footage for you, is if you're running a title that already has FSR enabled natively, so like Cyberpunk, they added FSR to it as well as DLSS. So one thing to be aware of is if you're running a title like say Cyberpunk 2077, where they've already enabled FSR natively, then AMD recommends that you use that uh, native FSR implementation. So you turn FSR in the game menu, rather than running it through RSR and using the driver version. The game's built-in version will likely be better, unless there's some new implementations of RSR that come out, you know, 2.0, 3.0, etc. while the game doesn't get updated past FSR 1.0. But at the time of filming, AMD recommends you use the game's internal FSR instead. So we took a few titles and we ran them at 1080p, like I said, with 1080p native for the first few. Then we would benchmark those with 720p native and then 720p upscaled with FSR or RSR if it's not Cyberpunk. The performance we've seen is more or less what I've expected. Depending on the CPU, the title, the graphics card, the whole system package, the performance hit may vary bit by bit. But in a lot of the titles we tested with a weaker CPU, 
we saw anywhere between like 3%, which not that big of a deal, to up to 10% uh, lower frames by using FSR, RSR. Sorry, I'm gonna keep mixing those two up because they're the same thing. So I saw up to 10% lower frames running a native 720p image versus a 720p upscaled image. Um, that was especially noticeable in Red Dead Redemption 2. And honestly, it makes sense with this hardware because this is a weaker CPU and you have to remember that you're going to be doing some extra work upscaling an image. It's not free performance and there isn't dedicated hardware on these cards, as far as I'm aware, that's doing that conversion, that upscaling for you, like with an Nvidia card. You're taking that image and you're using your powerful hardware or mediocre hardware to upscale it. So despite saying all of that, would I still recommend turning it on? Of course I would. My goodness, it looks very, very good when you're running at quality at 1080p. Okay, not very, very good, but it looks pretty dang good compared to native 720p. I'll have a comparison of just side by side and you'll see the difference. It's pretty, pretty stark going from fuzzy jaggies everywhere to a somewhat cleaner image. Now again, like I said, you can go to a different channel and they can nitpick shimmering here, fence post here, things like that. But I would still turn it on for most titles if I don't have that headroom. If I can run 1080p native on a 1080p display, you leave it off. So anyways, that's my take on this and that's just me kind of cover a video on something that's been driving me crazy. Whether or not it's useful to you guys is well up to you guys. So give the video a like if you agree with me and this was also bothering you or if you learned something new. Leave a comment to, you know, let me know what your experience has been and especially on what hardware. If you have an experience, negative or positive, leave me your specs too. I'm actually curious to see how this plays out on everybody else's hardware. Hop in the Discord if you want to chat in more real time. Get subscribed and we'll see you next time. I'm getting 